Welcome to the National Kidney Foundation Spring Clinical Meeting uh, 2013. I'm Ken Archiveri from EHAKD, the official blog of the American Journal of Kidney Disease. It's my pleasure to have Dr. Zan here, uh, who is actually a fellow at, uh, a nephrology fellow at Mayo Clinic, and presenting a very interesting poster on MPGN um, uh, related autoimmune diseases. Welcome, Dr. Zan. Thank and you, can you tell us a little bit about your poster that you're presenting today? Sure. So we looked at um, um, secondary causes of MPG, in particular autoimmune disease uh, associated with membranal proliferative glomerulonephritis, and we reviewed the biopsies at Mayo Clinic from 2002 to 2012. And over a 10-year period, we had about 308 biopsies that were consistent with the MPGM pattern. And out of those, we identified 17 patients that had a concomitant diagnosis of autoimmune disease. Out of those, we had to exclude a few patients because we didn't have enough information on infant fluorescence or didn't have research authorization or found that they had actually monoclonal deposition on the immunofluorescence. So we ended up with 12 patients at the end, and uh, we had five patients that had rheumatoid arthritis, three patients that had primary Sjogren's, two with undifferentiated connective tissue, one with primary sclerosing cholangitis, and one with Graves' disease. So sort of a wide variety, predominantly are rheumatoid arthritis and um, primary Sjogren's. And it turned out that about the mean or the median time from the time of diagnosis of autoimmune to membrane proliferative was about uh, 9.7 years. So you can actually develop it further out, years after you have had your diagnosis of autoimmune. Um, uh, primarily, patients had, our average crab was about 2.1 with a protein of, you know, uh, two grams over 24 hours, um, and the majority of patients presented with low complement levels and had predominantly IgM deposits uh, on their biopsy. Um, about like 11 out of the 12 had primarily IgM deposits, whereas usually with other MPGM, you sometimes see IgG predominantly. Uh, majority of patients were uh, treated with prednisone, and actually the response was favorable. Um, uh, you know, the follow-up proteinuria after treatment was down to about 400 milligrams from the 2 grams, and the creatinine average was about 1.6 from the 2.1 from the beginning. And we had only three patients on dialysis at the end, but two of them had started on dialysis at the time of um, diagnosis. Uh, the treatment was very variable, but the majority of patients did receive prednisone. Um, some patients did have evidence of cryo on their biopsy, and those received uh, rituximab primarily, and there was a wide range of either, you know, Imuran or Celsep or Cytoxan. Uh, so hard to know what really should be recommended as of treatment-wise, but uh, for the most part, it was favorable regardless of what kind of treatment they got. Um, very nice association. Uh, this brings us to um, uh, the new classification of MPGN mm -hmm. that has come out of Mayo Clinic. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, uh, tell our readers, uh, listeners, about this new classification of sure. MPGN? Sure. So traditionally, MPGN was divided to type 1, 2, and 3, which is essentially based on what you find on biopsies or on pathology slide, and it really doesn't tell you much about what's the underlying mechanism for this seeing this pattern. Uh, so the so new it was largely based on electron microscopy. Point. Correct, That's correct. Okay. Right, either be it sub endothelia or intramembranous or sub epithelia as a where you see the deposit precisely. But now we know that that doesn't tell you much information as what really is the underlying cause. So the new classification that has been proposed is to divide it into complement mediated MPGM versus immune complex mediated MPGM. And this really addresses what's the underlying cause. So with the complement mediated, you primarily see complement deposits, you might see traces to one plus of immunoglobulin, but predominantly is a complement uh, deposition that you see, and that tells you that there's an abnormality in the alternative complement pathway, and that perhaps you should uh, pursue that further to see you know, if there are any genetic mutations in the uh, complement pathway. Alternatively, the other uh, MPGM would be immune complex mediated, and as the name suggests, it's an immune complex deposition, so you have an antigen antibody that you know, uh, gets deposited in the um, in the kidney, and usually the, the kind of top differential to think about would either be chronic infection, which commonly would be hepatitis C, but it could be any other chronic infection that you have, that the you know patient might have, 
and uh, monoclonal gamopathy would be another uh, common finding, and then autoimmune uh, would be another one. So the other one we call C3GN. Correct. 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 And, uh, yeah. The alternative pathway. Other pathway. Yeah. Um, in your study, um, did you exclude lupus patients, or uh, were you surprised that you didn't have lupus as your top autoimmune right. disease? Right. Right. Uh, great question. So we actually did exclude the patients that had a diagnosis of lupus because it's a well-known uh, association that you might see a membranoproliferative pattern on uh, biopsy with patients with lupus. So that was, uh, you know, excluded from the study. So I suspect it had to be included that probably lupus would have been the most common. Uh, but we excluded that we had rheumatoid arthritis and sugar as the most common. Well, thank you again, Dr. Rand, uh, for joining us on uh, EHHPD at the National Kidney Foundation Spring Clinical Meeting.